Leave Rage and Risk. These are two words. Leverage. Now we will define the terms. First of all, we will define the terms. Leverage. What is leverage? Now, this word leverage. is derived from the word lever to lever lever and those of you went through secondary school and you attended the subject is it physics you remember words like lever Full cram. That's the origin of this word, Carides. Lever, lever, to lever. To lever is to, to lever is to amplify. To push, to amplify, to lever, to lift. So if you cover that in physics, you'll be able to understand the concept very fast. Because I've always said, candidates, that we learn through correlation and repetition. So if you understand to labor as we studied in physics, then it will be, easy, it will be very easy for you to understand when you are talking about leverage in finance. And if you didn't cover this in physics, then maybe the thing that comes to your mind is this one. Lever. And I was rubbing this one, is what came to my mind. Just remember this, it's been long since I took this one. Lever, it's been long. Okay? So we say leverage, someone, this one comes to mind, the full cram, the lifting. Another one who has no, in your memory, this one is not there. That, this one does not ring a bell, but this one rings a bell. Lever, you've not been to the butchery of late to buy this one. Okay, but my point is we learn through correlation. We correlate things. So it's better to learn to correlate things than just memorizing because memorizing is very very hard very expensive rot memory is it can be cumbersome so leverage is derived from the word lever and in finance leverage refers to the use of borrowed funds to increase a company's return on equity. Refers to the use of borrowed funds. Refers to the use of borrowed funds Listen to this word. To do what? To increase. To increase. To amplify. To increase. To lever. To increase a company's return on equity. Do you see now the origin of the word? Levering, leverage, lever to lever, to amplify. 
So a company may use borrowed funds, borrow money, borrowed funds can be used to increase a company's return on equity. And these borrowed funds can lever, these borrowed funds can increase, these borrowed funds can amplify both process and losses. If you are not careful, this leverage can also be counterproductive. Leverage can amplify both profits and losses. Sometimes we say geared, gearing, gearing. Again, look at that word. Another word for leverage is gearing. The word gearing is derived from the word gear. When you say we are shifting gears, shifting gears, we say we are increasing. What is being increased here? It's a return on equity. It is an increase in profitability. You understand? So leverage is the same as gearing. When you say a company is highly geared, when you say a company is highly geared, when we say the leverage is high, then that means that the Farm has used significant amount of borrowed funds in its capital structure. So that's the meaning of leverage. Then there is risk. 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 Now, risk. Simply put, candidates, risk refers to the potential for financial loss. Refers to potential of financial loss. In simple terms, potential of financial loss potential for financial loss. Now we've defined leverage. So let's shift gears. There are three types of leverage. Types of leverage. There are three types of leverage. There are three types of leverage. One, operating leverage. Please pay attention. Operating leverage, the first type of leverage. Operating leverage. Now, Operating leverage is the use of fixed costs to increase a company's return on equity. It is the use of fixed costs to lever, to increase, to amplify a company's return on equity or or just profitability which is the use of the fixed cost to increase a company's return on equity to increase a company's return on equity right to increase return on equity and we know fixed costs are costs that do not change with the level of production. Fixed costs are constant costs. 
fixed costs fixed costs we know are costs that do not change with the change in the sales volume these are costs that do not change with the increase in sales volume like salaries so if you are paying a production manager 100,000 shillings even if the sales move to 100 million that will not increase the salary if you are living in uh, or operating your business in a rented uh, 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 property then the rent is constant regardless of the amount of sales you make so operating leverage is the use of fixed costs to increase a company's return on equity you understand So we have operating leverage, then again we have operating risk. What is operating risk? Operating risk. You recall we defined risk as the potential for financial loss. Now I'm using simple terms, candidates. But by potential, I mean possibility potential possibility of uh, financial loss refers to the potential so operating leverage is the use of fixed cost to increase profitability or to increase the return on equity on the other hand operating risk operating risk is the risk associated with with the operating leverage it is the risk associated with operating leverage. The risk associated with operating leverage is the risk that a company will not be able to generate enough funds to cover its fixed costs. Please listen to what I'm saying. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. What I've just said. What have what have I just said? I'm defining operating risk after having defined operating leverage. Companies use fixed costs to increase profitability or return on equity but there are times when this fixed cost may not increase profitability or return on equity so that risk which is the potential for financial loss that a company will not be able to generate enough sales to cover fixed costs is what we are referring to as operating risk the danger that the company cannot make enough sales to cover for fixed costs because for you to make profit the fixed costs associated with production must be met that means that you have you must make higher sales than the fixed costs in order to make but there are times when the sales that are generated or that are realized may, may not be able to cover even the fixed costs that inability for a company to meet its fixed costs is what we are referring to as the operating risk And that can lead to significant losses. Is that clear? There are three types of leverage. One, operating leverage. Number two, financial leverage. Financial leverage.
it is let me write it it is the risk that the company may not what did i say that the company may not may not do what the company will not be able to generate enough sales generate enough sales to meet its fixed cost then the second type of leverage and risk is a financial leverage financial leverage now financial leverage is the use of debt 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 it is the use of debt financial leverage is the use of debt to do what to increase a company's return on equity or profitability it is the use of debt to lever to amplify to increase the company's return on equity or profitability the use of debt do i need to define debt If you are in Kenya, surely do I need to define what debt is? If you are a Kenyan, you are told that in Kenya, before you are born, you are slapped with a debt of ten million national debt. You have a you have a a, a portion proportion of the national debt, ten million. So we are all uh, immediately after being born burdened with the debt so in business candidates the use of debt to increase the profitability of a company or return on equity is what we're referring to as financial leverage and we all know debt is a fixed cost debt is a fixed cost so it increases the company's operating leverage. Do you see the connection? We learn through correlation. Hmm? We, we learn through correlation. Can you correlate? Financial leverage is the use of debt, which is a fixed cost. So if debt is a fixed cost, it also increases operating leverage. It increases a company's operating leverage as well financial leverage so if financial leverage is the use of uh, debt to increase the company's uh, profitability then what is what is a uh, financial risk financial risk financial risk Now, financial risk is the risk that is associated with. It is the risk associated with financial leverage. It is the risk associated with financial leverage. Financial risk. The risk associated with financial leverage is the risk that a company will not be able to meet its debt obligations. 
it is the risk that the company will not be able to meet its debt obligations. It's the risk that the company will not be able to meet its debt obligations. It is the risk. What is the risk? Potential for financial loss. The danger that the company will not meet its obligations, debt obligations. Debt obligations are things like repaying, repaying. If you are unable to repay, if a company takes a loan, that company has an obligation to pay the, in, the principal and the interest. That is the obligation. So if the company is unable to pay the debt, that is a danger. It is a danger. It is a risk. It is a danger. It's a potential for financial loss. The company may lose big time. If the company has taken debt against its assets, candidates, if the company has given the title deed to the bank, the, the log books, to act as collateral for the debt, and the company is unable to repay the loan, do you see the danger for financial loss? So the risk or the danger that the company will not be able to meet its debt obligations. That danger, that risk, that possibility that the company will not meet its debt obligations is what we are referring to as financial risk. It is the risk associated with the financial leverage. So financial risk is the risk that is associated with financial if you don't remember these other words, candidates, if you are asked to define financial risk, you can just say financial risk is a risk that is associated with financial leverage. That's why I'm trying to use few words so that you can remember the words. In the exam, you don't need to do a paragraph. If you ask financial leverage, it is a the use of debt to increase the company's profitability. You get the marks. You don't say this is whereby, for instance, when you are running a company limited by shares and you are the finance manager and you are appointed by the board of directors and you are sitting in an office where you are the head of the department, uh, this is whereby. This is whereby, this is whereby, this is whereby. We see a lot of that in your answers, please. You can avoid that. This is for instance. This is for instance whereby. Paradventure. For example. Okay, you don't have to do that. Learn to summarize these things so that you hit it on the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. All right? So... There are three types of leverage. Number one, operating leverage. Number two, financial leverage. Number two, financial leverage. Number three, we have total leverage. Total leverage. Total leverage, total leverage, total, 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 total leverage, total leverage. What is total leverage? Total leverage is the combined effect of financial leverage and operating leverage. It is the combined effect. 
of operating leverage and financial leverage. It is the combined effect of operating and financial leverage. The total. Let me check your syllabus. Does it say that? Total leverage? Yes. Total leverage. It is the combined effect now if total leverage is the combined effect of uh, operating leverage and financial leverage then what is total risk then what will be total risk. Now, total risk is the risk associated with the total leverage. You see the language. It is the risk associated with the total leverage. You see the connection? You are studying leverage and risk. So total risk is the risk associated with total leverage, which is the combination of Operating leverage and financial leverage. The risk associated with total leverage is the risk that a company will not be able to generate enough profits to cover both fixed costs and debt obligations. It is the risk that the company, it is the risk that the company will not generate enough profits. It is the risk that the company will not generate enough profits to cover for operating fixed costs and debt obligations. Total risk is the risk that the company will not be able to generate enough profits to cover fixed costs and debt obligations. Total risk is the risk that the company will not generate enough profit to cover for fixed costs and debt obligations. Total risk is the risk associated with total leverage. Total risk is the risk that is associated with total leverage. Total risk is the risk that the company will not generate enough profits to cover both fixed costs and debt obligations. Total risk is the risk. It is the risk that the company will not generate enough profit to cover for fixed costs and debt obligations. 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 Operating risk and financial risk. Let's take an illustration. This will do in 15 minutes. Panda Limited deals with laboratory accessories. A dropper sells for 500 shillings per piece. A dropper sells for 500 shillings per piece and has of course, equivalent to 50% of the selling price per piece of the dropper. It is a dropper, not a dropper. Dropper. The firm has a fixed operating cost of 500,000 units. 
financing costs of 750,000. Further analysis of the farm reveals that if the farm sales increase by 10%, the farm's earnings before interest and taxes increase by 15%, and if the farm's EBIT increase by 10%, the farm's earnings per share increase by 12%. Required, calculate one break even quantity of sales. One break even point. Is it in sales? Is it in shillings or in units? Break even quantity of sales in units. So I write here units. Because break even point can also be calculated in shillings. So if it is in units, what is the formula? Now this one must have gotten uh, these candidates off guard. Because uh, we normally don't uh, do break even points in financial management. This, I think, you cover it extensively in uh, management accounting. But you see, that is the nature of your exam. That means I can do his thing anytime. So, what's the formula for break even point in units? It's fixed cost, the total fixed cost, we divide by contribution. If it is units, it should be contribution per unit. But if you ask break even points in shillings, then it will be contribution margin ratio, CMR. So it would be a ratio to be zero point something because the contribution margin ratio is the contribution over sales and contribution is always smaller value than sales because we deduct fixed cost from the sales to get the contribution so this sales is always a higher figure compared so you always have for the contribution margin ratio you'll always have a zero point something. That's why the break-even points in shillings, because you are dividing with zero point, will be a higher value compared to break-even point in the, the value in uh, units. So all you needed is to know that formula, then you get to the question. What is the fixed cost from the question? the fixed cost from the question. Look at the question. Isn't it given? Is it not given? The firm has a fixed operating cost of 500,000 and a fixed financing cost of 750. So the total, the total of 500 plus 750, that is the fixed cost. Total fixed cost. So this is 700,000 plus 500,000. We divide by the contribution per unit. So get to the question again. What information do we have? We read that a dropper sells for 500 shillings per piece. That's the selling price. And has a variable cost equivalent to 50% of the selling price. So we know contribution candidates, contribution we know is equal to selling price minus variable cost. So the selling price you are told is 500 shillings per unit. This we have. The variable cost we are told it is 50% of 
of the selling price. Of here means your times, 50% times 500, which is just half of that, 250. So this is 50% times 500. That will give you the, the variable cost. When you deduct this from the selling price, you'll have the contribution per unit. So what is the break even point in units? Are you getting 5,000 units as the break even point in units? Look at the question again. Lift the question. 700,000, 750,000 plus 500. 750,000 plus 500. Are you getting 5,000? Correct. The second part of the question, what is the, what is required? Operating break-even quantity of sales in units. Operating break-even quantity. Operating break even quantity in units this will be equal to now look at this this should guide you this name operating here it is just break even point if you ask the break even point in units you take the total this is total, total fixed cost. But you see the break-even point in note number two is in relation to operating. So here we are going to divide the operating fixed cost. We have operating fixed cost. We have operating fixed cost. We have operating, the firm has a fixed operating cost. Yes, fixed operating cost. This will be equal to fixed operating cost fixed operating cost we divide by the contribution per unit because it is in units if it is in shillings we divide contribution margin ratio it will be a ratio so what is the fixed operating cost from the question? The firm has a fixed operating cost of 500,000. So this will be 500,000. The contribution does not change. It's 250. What is the total? 2,000. units i not get into the interpretation i know you know what it means when you say break even point of five thousand units that i know you know now not number three degree degree of operating leverage degree of operating leverage four three degree of operating leverage operating leverage you recall we defined it as the use of fixed costs to increase a company's return on equity degree of operating leverage so this will be equal to percentage change in a bit we divide by the percentage change in sales that is the formula for degree of operating leverage percentage change in earnings before interest and tax 
before interest and tax. Now look at the question. Go to the question. Look at the question. Do we have the inputs? Last sentence there reads, further analysis of the farm reveals that if the farm sales increase by 10%, increase by 10%, that already tells you that is a percentage change in sales. Do you see that? If the farm sales increase by 10%, comma, the farm's earnings before interest and taxes will increase by 15%. So this is equal to 15% divided by 12%. How much is it? Is it not just 1.5? This is 10%, 1.5 times. That is the degree of operating leverage. Roman four. Degree of financial leverage. Is that the question? Degree of financial leverage, abbreviated as DFL. What is the formula? The formula is the percentage change in EBIT over percentage change in EPS. Percentage change in EPS over percentage change over percentage change in a bit percentage change in eps over percentage change in a bit so eps increases by 12 percent and a bit increases by 10 percent we are picking the figures directly from the question. 12% divided by 10%. This again is just 1.2 times. So you see this. Numerator becomes the denominator here. 1.2%. 1.2 times. Then number five, we are to calculate the degree of total leverage. Degree of total leverage. Five. Degree of total leverage will be equal to degree of operating leverage times degree of financial leverage which is equal to 1.5 times times 1.2 times what is the answer 1.2 gilbert says 1.8 1.8 times 1.8 times. Now it's not enough candidates to just know the formula and how to calculate and how to get the right answers. How to get the right answers. At this stage in your training, you should be able to interpret. Interpretation is what helps us understand if no or no if you have understood the concept. This is good just for the exam purposes, but in practice, in practice, you should be able to interpret. When you, are, when you say the degree of operating leverage is 1.2 times, what does that mean? Or 1.2 times degree of financial leverage or combined leverage of 1.8 times what does that mean
These are leverage degrees, degrees of leverage. Now, degrees of leverage measure the sensitivity of a company's earnings to changes in sales volume. Sensitivity, underline that word. The leverage degrees, these three leverage degrees, they help us to measure the sensitivity. How sensitive is the company's earnings to changes in sales volume? The degrees help us assess a company's risk exposure and its ability to amplify profit or losses. So then, what is the meaning of DOL of 1.5 times? Now, a degree of operating leverage of 1.5 times means that for every 1% change in sales volume, for every, let me repeat, for every 1% change in sales volume, the company's operating income, which is EBIT, will change by 1.5%. I started by saying that leverage degrees help us measure the sensitivity of companies' earnings to changes in sales volume. Have that at the back of your mind as I'm talking about the 1%. The degree of operating leverage of 1.5% means that for every 1% change, 1% change in sales volume, if the sales volume changes by 7%, increases or reduces by 1%, then the company's operating income, the company's earnings before interest and tax, the EBIT, will change by 1.5%. So this degree of operating leverage, in other words, measures the sensitivity of operating income to changes in sales volume. There are just two things, candidates. You don't need to memorize what I'm saying. Just look at these two things. If this sales volume or sales changes by 1%, then the EBIT is going to change by 1.5%. It measures the sensitivity of operating income to changes in sales. It measures the sensitivity of operating income. EBIT is the operating income. This is income before interest and tax. Now let me sacrifice and, and uh, do something let me just sacrifice let me sacrifice this is a sacrifice i don't need to do this but uh the sacrifice when you prepare the income statement you normally have the sales then there is the operating costs deduct operating costs these are earnings or sales deduct operating costs then you have earnings before interest 
and tax. You have earnings before interest and tax here. Of course, then you'll have the interest. You deduct the interest. After deducting interest, then you have earnings before tax. Do you see that? So out of this earnings before tax, you deduct the tax to have earnings after tax. Then you can go on and, and pay preferences, dividends, pay, pay the ordinary dividends, then you have you have money, you, you take to reserves and all that. So when I'm explaining that, I'm expecting you to have this, you have this in your mind, because this you covered in standard one, okay? In grade one, this one. So you see the relationship, operating. These are operating costs. So this is called earnings before interest and tax or even operating profit. So if there is a change of 1% in these sales or earnings, whether it is an increase by 1% or increase, uh, increase or decrease of 1%, then that change, 1% change in sales, will lead to a 1.5% change in the earnings before interest and tax. That's the interpretation. Such that a high degree of operating leverage, a degree of operating leverage greater than one indicates that the company has a high degree of operating leverage. A DOL greater than one indicates that the company has a higher degree of operating leverage and that means that a small change in sales volume can lead to operating income, a very high operating income. For example, if sales, let me use different figures. For example, if sales, if sales, if sales volume increases by 10%, that means for this case, that operating income will increase by 15%. If you have a problem with 1%, let us use 10%. If sales volume increases by 10%, that means that the EBIT will increase by 15%. Because standard is this is a ratio. By dividing this and that is a ratio. If you are getting this, this is a ratio. It's a ratio of 1 to 1.15. This again, this is mathematics we covered in form 1. Form 1, 844, form 1. Ratios. So that is the interpretation for DOL. DOL. Very important. Now let's move to degree of financial leverage. Degree of financial leverage. It measures the sensitivity of EPS to changes in EBIT. Degree of financial leverage of 1.2. Degree of financial leverage of 1.2. What does that mean? A DFL of 1.2 means that for every 1% change in earnings before interest and tax, for every 1% change in earnings before interest and tax, the company's earnings per share, the company's earnings per share, the company's EPS will change by 12%. Again, candidates, when, when calculating EPS, 
EPS is down here. After you've deducted the tax, you have earnings after tax. It is from these earnings after tax that you pay. These are earnings attributable to shareholders. If you divide these total earnings, the total earnings, by number of shares, you get the earnings after tax. So if there is a change here in EBIT of 10% increase, if this EBIT increases by 10%, then the earnings per share will increase by 12%. That's the interpretation. Then we come to degree of combined lever leverage. Now the degree of combined leverage measures the combined effect of operating and financial leverage, the combined effect. So a DTL of 1.8%, a DTL of 1.8% means that for every 1% change in sales volume, the company's EPS will change by 1.8%. The effect is the EPS, it will change by 1.8% such that a DTL greater than 1 indicates that the company has a high degree of total leverage. If it is greater than 1, it has a higher degree of leverage. And that means that a small change in sales volume can lead to a larger change in EPS. Because you see, this one is changing by 1%, then this one changes by 1.2. By or it's changing by 10%, 10 that one changes by by 12 percent uh, for example for the dtl dtl if sales volume increases by 10 percent then the eps is going to increase by 18 percent so a company with a a high dol and dfl a company with a high degree of operating leverage and a high degree of financial leverage is a company that is highly leveraged or highly geared and that means that it is sensitive to changes in sales volume and interest rates so we are through with the bit on uh, leverage and risk in the next lesson we proceed with the topic bye bye